All right, y'all, this is a pre-recorded video because I had somewhere to be today. But I wanted to be sure I did my ministry. Hold on. Get my mic where it needs to be. There we go. Now you ought to be able to hear me better. Okay. So I want to jump right in and talk about what we're going to talk about today. So let's pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, thanking you for another day, another chance to hear from you another chance to receive from you, another chance to live, because we only live when we hear from you. We can only live according to what you say, and you designed us that way. So right now, I die to myself. I say, not my will, but thine be done. Speak through me, oh God, breathe through me. Let everything that comes forth be what you want under the guidance and the leading and the power of your Holy Spirit, that you might be glorified that the saints would be edified or built up, that the demons would be terrified and sinners would be mortified. They'd be cut to the heart and not want to live one more day without you. I speak the hundredfold blessing on this word. All that hear it, receive it, know how to multiply it. can get a hundredfold return on what's said today. We thank you for it, oh God, and we're looking for a power manifestation. We're looking for your power to show up because we're talking to the same God that gave Moses the power to, par- power to part the Red Sea. We're talking to the same God that gave Elijah the power to shut up the heavens. We're talking to the same God that gave Peter and John the power to lift up a crippled man. So we're looking for a power manifestation because the scriptures say that when your kingdom shows up, it's not an eloquent speech, it's not articulateness of man, it's in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and of power. So that's what we're looking for today. Oh God, we thank you for it. We believe you for it, and we're expecting you to do great things. It's in Jesus' name I pray, believe, declare, and decree. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. Today's live prophetic word. Now, why do I say that? Because this is not a sermon. Preaching, teaching, and prophesying is not the same thing. I'm going to say that one more time. Preaching, teaching, and prophesying is not the same thing. So what I do when I come out here, I'm prophesying. And to prophesy means to speak by divinely inspired utterance. To say what the Holy Ghost is saying. Uh, and the prophetic can be a uh, part prognostication where God is telling you the future, or God can speak right to you now, or the Holy Ghost can explain to you something that happened in the past. There's not a time limit. It's just whatever the Spirit of God is saying. Okay? So today's live prophetic word is not a sermon. I'm not preaching. I'm prophesying. And I'm going to do some teaching too. Today's live prophetic word is mother's milk. Mother's milk. Okay. It's entitled Mother's Milk. Now, for some reason, uh, it's not letting me put the title on the screen. So we'll just have to go with that. Hold on a sec. Oh, it doesn't look like it's. No, it doesn't look like it's letting me put put the comments on the screen because I'm pre-recording for some strange reason. Okay, so we're going to talk about today is mother's milk. Let's go to our first foundational scripture. And that's going to be 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. Let me see if it'll let me put that on the screen. Yes, yes, it will. Okay, you should be able to see that now on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. First Peter 2, 1 through 3. As a matter of fact, let me tighten that up. It says out of the NIV, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, 
now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Wow. Once again, action pack verses. We're going to start with verse three. Peter says, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. That lines up with Romans two and four. that says, don't you know that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? So when you first get saved and when you first come in the kingdom, what you're supposed to understand is that it was not by your works, not by your goodness, not by your morals, not by your ethics that you got saved, but it was God's goodness, God's grace, God's mercy. He started out the relationship showing you how it goes. That it's not because of what we do and it's not because of us, but he does what he does because of his goodness. And in Romans 2 and 4, where it says the goodness of God leads you to repentance. What people try to do is people try to condemn you into being better. People try to nitpick you into being better. People use fear and shame and guilt and throwing your sins in your face and throwing your flaws and your faults in your, your face. That's what people think will make you change. But that's not the way God does it. What God does is in spite of your faults, in spite of your flaws, in spite of your sins, in spite of your failures, in spite of your mistakes, he's good to you anyway. And the impact that's supposed to have on your heart is it'll just make you say, wow. When you realize that you don't deserve it, when you realize that God is saying you don't have to deserve it, I'm going to give it to you anyway. When God says to you, I'm going to give it to you because I'm good, not because you're good. See, if that don't melt your heart, nothing will. So Peter says, now that you've tasted and seen that, that God is good and that when you didn't deserve it, he's good to you. If that don't move your heart, then nothing will. So Peter said, now that you've experienced that, what you're supposed to do is get rid of some things. You're supposed to get rid of malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. So I want you to think about your kidneys and your liver. And I want you to think about the fact that we have to go to the bathroom every day, many times a day. I'm not trying to be gross. I'm trying to show you that your natural body has a system whereby it purges itself of poison. Mm -hmm. Every day there are poisons and toxins that you're exposed to, either through food or environment or something your body's trying to get rid of. So your body has a system, livers, kidneys, elimination system, to get rid of anything that would be poisonous to you if you held on to it. So as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Peter is saying here that if you're holding on to malice, ill will, you're wishing someone ill, or you want to hurt them, or deceit, you're still being shady. You're not being honest and truthful. Hypocrisy, that Greek word hypocrite, it's a, a theater word, because you would have one person play multiple parts. So what they would do is change their mask, depending on who they were trying to play. That's where we get the word hypocrite from. So Peter is saying, wear different faces. Saying one thing and doing another. Professing one lifestyle but living another. Envy. Okay, wishing that you had something that somebody else had. Because envy is when you wish you had what they had. And jealousy is when you wish you were who they were. And slander of every kind. What is slander? Bad-mouthing people. Bearing false witness. Talking about stuff that you don't know for sure but you're, you're saying something negative about them, or you know for sure it's not true or it can't be proven, but you're going to repeat it. Peter said, all that got to come out. All that got to come out of your inner man. Okay? So we all know in nature when anything come out, something got to come in, and that's where it comes in with verse 2. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So. What is mother's milk, mother's milk like in the natural? Well, it is literally the best human food on earth. Everything that your developing body needs as a newborn, as an infant, 
is found in your mother's breast milk. It's the most perfect food for babies. There's no, there's no comparison. And you crave it. So when a woman is nursing, when a woman is uh, nursing her baby, she feels her milk come in. And she knows it doesn't matter what she's doing. She said, oh, my child is hungry. Got to feed the baby because you can feel the milk coming through her milk ducts and uh, feel her breasts. And she knows she needs to nurse. Okay. And studies have continually shown that if you don't get enough food when you're growing up and if you don't get enough affection when you're a child, you don't physically develop. It's the most amazing thing. It's not just food malnourishment that will stunt your growth. Emotional malnourishment will also stunt your growth. Okay, so so there's something about nursing at your mother's breast and feeling her arms around you, and feeling your mother's love. There's something about that. It's not just the nutrients in the milk that makes you grow. It's the love that your mother's communicating in the experience that helps you grow as a baby. And if you don't get enough, your 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 growth is stunted. They have studies that show that babies that don't get hugged enough don't develop, don't physically get bigger. It's the most amazing thing. Okay. So Peter said, when you first get saved, you're like that. You should crave pure spiritual milk. Now, why does he spell it out like that? Because the first thing he told you is the stuff you got to get rid of. So if you are a Christian and you're still at a point in your life where you're craving malice, deceit, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, envy, and slander, then you got some work to do. If you're still desiring those things, those things are from the old life. Those things are from the old nature, the old man that is sin cursed from Adam. Those things are from the devil's kingdom. So if you are a Christian, if you're a born again believer, but you still crave those things, you got some work to do. You got some growing to do because you got to get rid of that. Because you see that God is good to you in spite of your imperfections. So why would you want to hurt yourself or others when God's been good to you and he did not require perfection. So why are you doing all those things, malice, deceit, hypocrisy, being two-faced, being envious and slandering when God's been good to you? So like newborn babies crave, that's what we're supposed to want. Just like when you're a literal newborn baby, you crave your mother's milk and you are crying, crying, crying till you get fed. It says, crave pure spiritual milk. Why does Peter put the word pure in there? Because remember I told you, whenever you read the scripture, don't just study what it says, study the flip. Because the flip is relevant. Whenever you see something in the Bible and you read what it says, consider the flip of what it's saying. Because the flip is relevant. Because there's such a thing as impure milk. That's why. There's such a thing as impure teaching. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. There's such a thing as being fed improperly. And when you get spiritual malnourishment or when you get spiritual milk that is not actually healthy or pure, then you can't really grow. And that's what's wrong with a lot of believers is that the stuff you got fed wasn't pure. How do you know it's not pure? What did it produce? If they taught you how to be a groupie, they didn't teach you how to depend on Christ. They taught you how to depend on them. If they said things to you like, don't nobody, God don't talk to nobody but me. God didn't even write the Bible that way. He didn't write the Bible through no one person. Okay? If they say that you've got to Go through them to study the scripture. No, you can know the Bible and you can know the Lord for yourself. That's what uh, spiritual leaders are supposed to be helping you do, which is know the scriptures and know the Lord for yourself. Okay? If they're trying to, to tether you to their program to get you to work, you know, a full-time job outside of your regular job with little to no compensation, 
then they're just trying to help build their kingdom. And nothing wrong with volunteer work, don't misunderstand me. Nothing wrong with volunteer work, but when it gets out of balance, and now you have all these requirements and demands of a full-time position with no compensation, you're going to burn the people out, you're going to wear the people out, and that's why a lot of people leave church and never come back. Because it got used. Okay? It's got to be pure. That's why God spends time preparing his ministers to purge us of anything. And it's a constant process, especially with prophets. It's a constant process of God purging you and cleansing you and getting out of you, burning out of you the things that are not like him. So that when he speaks through you, he can speak and the message can be pure. And it's not bogged down with any of your foolishness. Okay, so it says, so that by each you may grow up in your salvation the same way you nurse at your mother's breast and grow in the natural. Okay, now what I want to emphasize is that that's at the beginning. Just like that experience is at the beginning of your natural life, you don't stay on breast milk. You don't nurse from your mother's breast for the rest of your life, okay? Where do we get the idea that that was okay spiritually? We don't expect it in the natural. We don't accept it in the natural. But for some reason, well, I know the reason. We have accepted it in the spiritual. You wanna know the reason? The reason is because so much of the Western American church has cut out the apostolic <clears throat> and the prophetic. That's why. You can't get everything you need from evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You got to have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, deacons, and elders. You got to have the full complement of spiritual leadership that the Lord set up. You can't get it from the one office, and you can't get it from the one person. If you only listen to one office and you you only listen to one person. Don't you understand that means that your knowledge will never be any greater than theirs? Don't you understand that they can only preach the faith level that they've experienced? So your faith will never be any greater than theirs. Don't you understand that? Don't you understand that's why so many Christians are not getting the full benefits of the New Testament? What's a testament? It's something that someone uh, writes as a will, and then when they die, it kicks in and gives you the benefit. So Jesus died to give us the benefit of the New Testament that he wrote in his own blood. But not every believer is getting the full benefit of what Jesus died to give you because you are limiting your knowledge and limiting your faith to one person or one office. You ain't gonna never get everything God has for you in this life. And when you stand before him in judgment, you are going to be shocked and hurt when you hear the Lord say that he sent your answer to earth. It just didn't come the way you thought. Just didn't look like what you thought. Just didn't come through who you thought because you've been taught erroneously, which is a big F, a big fail for so many of our modern churches that you're just supposed to listen to one person speaking out of one office once a week. Huh. Did your mother nurse you? Once a week, did your mother get up on Sunday morning and say, today's feeding day, nurse you on Sunday morning and said, now, no more milk for you till next Sunday. Is that what happened? If you're listening to me, that is not what happened because you'd be dead. So spiritually, you have unfortunately become trained and accustomed to the idea of once a week on Sunday, one person, one office, 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. And you think that's all you need. That is not all you need. That's not even what the Bible teaches. We do it wrong. It's an F. It's a fail. And so you're not supposed to accept the idea that as you continue to grow as a Christian, that is all you need. Let's look at that in the scripture. I will show you that. Because I wouldn't have brought it up if I couldn't back it up. We're going to look at Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. You should have that on your screen, not on Instagram, but Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. 
Hebrews 5, 11 and 14, we have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who, li- <clears throat> excuse me, anyone who lives on milk, be still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Wow. Another set of scriptures that's action-packed. The writer of Hebrews is saying they have much to say about what's happening earlier in the chapter, which is about uh, leaving the basic principles and leaving elementary stuff and moving forward. But he's saying, or or whoever's writing is saying to the Jewish Christians, because Hebrews is written to Jewish Christians, it's hard for us to make this stuff clear to you because you're still immature. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody and they're still immature? Doesn't that get on your nerves? Okay. Uh, And it's talking about uh, the high priestly work of Christ after the order of Melchizedek. And it's talking about how, specifically in the verses uh, before verse 11, it's talking about how Jesus did his earthly ministry and he completed that. And then he moved on to his heavenly ministry. And then there's things he's doing in heaven now that are the next step of what God was doing. Okay. And so then picking up in verse 11, it says, we have much to say about that. That's what it's talking about. Okay. But the book of Hebrews, the entire book of Hebrews is about challenging the Jewish Christians. It's written to the readers to grow up, to become all that God wants them to be and to not stay babies. That's why today's weekly prophetic word is mother's milk. Are you still on mother's milk? Are you still in maternity? How long have you been saved? Are you still on mother's milk? Okay, in fact, by this time, some of you ought to be teaching other people, but you need a refresher course. You need to go back to elementary school of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. That means you never never developed your teeth. You never grew up from that infant stage. Anyone who lives on milk is still an infant, the Bible says. Hebrews 5 and 13, you're still an infant. You're not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Now, that is as plain as day. You haven't been taught. You don't know that righteousness requires growth. You don't know that righteousness, that which is right according to God, that which is right in God's eyes, that which aligns properly with God requires growth. There is no place in the Bible and there is no creature in creation that God does not require it to produce something. I mean, literally everything God made, literally everything went on creation week when God said, let there be, let there be. But that was just on earth, the stuff he made in heaven. Literally everything that God made, he requires it to produce something. And so if, you're, if you've been saved for a while and you're still on milk, you haven't been taught about righteousness, which righteousness includes right living, right perspective, that which is right in the eyes of God, that which properly aligns with God. You don't know nothing about that if you're still a baby Christian. And remember, the Holy Ghost told us at the end of last year, at the end of 2023, we would not be able to make it through 2024 being a baby Christian. And I have already experienced myself and have already seen people that I know and I'm connected to that have been in life and death situations already this year. I kid you not, I'm not making that up. Situations where uh, it was a possibility of their lives being over and they had to use their faith, use their faith to push back and stay alive. So the Holy Ghost is not playing games with us. He told us last year that 2024 was not going to be the kind of year where baby Christianity was going to make it. 
you're going to need more faith than a baby's faith to make it through this year. And I've already seen that play out in my life and in the lives of those of some people that I know. So you're not acquainted. You're not acquainted with proper teaching on righteousness if you don't know that. If you think it's okay in the eyes of God for you to go to church year after year after year for 20 years and keep doing the same thing, don't grow, don't change, don't learn nothing, don't know nothing, can't do more in the spirit, you're mistaken and you're still a baby. This year, that might cost you your life. That's how dangerous that is. When God gives you a warning like that, that means it's going to be severe uh, situations, severe penalties. It means it's going to be severe circumstances when God tells you you have to grow up. That if you haven't grown up by now, your immaturity might take you out. Okay? But then verse 14 says, but solid food is for the mature. Solid food is for the mature. Flowing in the apostolic and the prophetic and hearing different levels of word from God. Things that challenge you, things that cut you to the heart, things that cut your flesh, things that change the way you think, things that lead you to repent, to change your mind. Solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Constant use. Use it or lose it. Okay? Once again, that's why one meal once a week from one person in one office, not going to cut it. You have to constantly be using your faith. You have to constantly use the word of God. Every time something comes up in your body, something comes in your life, something comes in your mind, something comes anywhere that's not from God, you got to speak the word. You got to meditate the word, focus on the word, but you got to speak, you got to say it. You got to take the sword of the Lord. You got to fight back against that thing that's trying to come in your life. Constantly, you have to do that every day. That's why training you to come to church once a week on Sunday and listen to one person, that's why you keep hearing me say that, is wrong. It's ridiculous. Constantly. By constant use, it's like exercising every day. So as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Just like you got to exercise, you got to move this clay body, you got to move this one. The spiritual body, the inner man, you got to move him too. By using the word, by flowing in the Holy Ghost by growing and using what God is sending you to earth, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. In other words, I can recognize when something's from the devil. I can recognize when this is not right. This don't need to be in my life. I can recognize where this path is the wrong path. This thing is the wrong thing. I can recognize that this don't belong. This didn't come from God. So that don't belong to me. Came from the devil. I don't have to receive it. The only way for you to get there is to constantly be using the word, constantly speaking in tongues, constantly flowing in the Holy Ghost, constantly feeding your faith. You see that? So this Mother's Day, I stopped by, and I'm about to close. This Mother's Day, I stopped by to issue a challenge. Are you still on mother's milk? Are you still a baby Christian after all this time? Is that what you're doing? Because I stopped by to tell you that the Lord told us last year, stop. You need to stop. You need to stop being a baby Christian right now. You need to stop being a baby Christian. You need to stop. You need to stop because you're not going to make it if you are. You're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to grow up in the spirit. You're going to have to grow up and become everything that God wants you to become just to make it through this year. You understand that? That is a prophetic warning to you. Become everything that God wants you to be. Get on that path, the path of life, so you can make it through this year. Because some people are not going to make it because they refuse to grow up. I'm going to say that again and I'm done. Some people are not going to make it through 2024 because they refuse to grow up. Amen and amen. That's a prophetic word for the day. Mother's milk on Mother's Day 2024. I know that's not where you thought I was going, but that's what the prophetic is like. Don't forget to pick up my journal, my prophetic devotional journal, where you can develop your own prophetic, where you can study a prophetic scripture every day. Prophetic scripture every day. Ask the Holy Ghost to give you revelation on that scripture. And then write down what he says. And then later on, you write down when the, 
when it comes to pass, you can develop your own prophetic flow with the Holy Ghost. Because all Christians are supposed to prophesy. First Corinthians 14, 1 through 5. All Christians are supposed to prophesy. Okay? If you want to bless my ministry financially, if you want to sow into this ministry, sell it to me at prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. Okay? I will be here again next Sunday. If you didn't catch my No More Genies on Thursday, I talked about Prosperity Gospel Part 2. Was Jesus broke? You need to watch that one. Okay? Don't forget to like and share this video. I say that not because I'm trying to get clout. I say that because people need to hear the prophetic word of God. That's why I come on every week. All right. God bless you. Have a great Mother's Day. Enjoy your service. Enjoy your mom if she's still alive. Enjoy your memories if she's passed on. Enjoy your family. And I will see you 11 a.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday for the next weekly prophetic word. And I should be live. Amen and amen.